Hi, this is Greg Benz with an overview of the new Lumenzia Basics panel for Photoshop. Uh, if you're one of my Lumenzia customers already, this is a free upgrade and when you install you're going to see some comments about a second panel and the way you get to it is just go to Windows, Extensions, Basics here, click on this and this will open this. So it's a completely separate panel. Uh, it is installed in a single step when you use the uh, included script installer with Lumenzia. And this new panel is really designed to help folks who um, may not know all the keyboard shortcuts to commonly use functions when you're luminosity masking, or for folks who just want to have buttons, or for folks who maybe don't know what the options are if you're just getting started. So um, these are kind of more the building blocks, things that I left out of the primary Lumenzia panel because I didn't want to create a lot of clutter, but things that I think some people will find valuable and so I've put it in a separate panel. It has some additional value by being a separate panel in that you can put it wherever you want. So if you want to dock it alongside Lumenzia, then you can just flip it back and forth as you need to. Um, you can dock it as a little icon on the side here. Uh, you could pull it out if you wanted to have something floating around the screen. You can always grab these panels, put them wherever you want. So just a lot of flexibility to do what you want. Of course, if you don't need these tools, you can just always hide them. Uh, roll them up, whatever you need to do. So that's kind of the uh, the general workspace. Let's get into the different options within Lumenzia Basics. So first we see this undo redo and let me just show a quick example here. Let's go ahead and do a few things to the image. So I'm going to create a light curve selection of the sky here and let's go in and make an adjustment on it. Um, maybe boost the contrast. Um, not that great looking, but it'll it'll do what we need to do. And that is to show the, uh, in the history here, if I simply click undo, I can keep clicking it and go back multiple states. So normally when you hit Control or Command Z, you get a single step with the undo and redo option in Lumenzia Basics. You can go back as many steps as you want. You'll also notice that it's showing that Command Shift Z is the Mac shortcut for redo. So if you're trying to learn the shortcuts, hovering over these buttons is a nice way to, to see these tool tips. So, and if you do have one that ever rolls off the edge here, you may see some of these tool tips don't quite have enough room. You can just open up the panel a little bit if you need to, to see that tool tip. Um, but so within the, uh, the options here, um, we have the undo and redo. We have the content aware fill. This is great. If you have, for example, um, alignment issues in a couple of exposures and you want to fill in some mix missing sky pixels or things like that, Photoshop will try and fill in the gaps for you. Uh, stamp will create a uh, stamp of all the visible layers here. So we've just merged these and created a new layer. Uh, smart object will convert whatever is selected, including multiple layers, into a smart object. So a nice way of packing things together to, to have a uh, nice non-destructive uh, workflow, uh, especially when you're applying filters. Uh, next is the show mask. So we have a luminosity mask on this layer. If I hit show mask, it's going to actually show me what the contents of this mask are. I could have gotten there by also alt clicking. So if you're familiar with that, it's the exact same thing. It's just gonna let us show this mask. The other option here, this X mask, is what you get if you shift click. And what it does is it temporarily disables the mask. So what we're seeing here is, here is the curve adjustment, which is pretty extreme, applied just to these lighter areas of the image. But if we turn it off, now we're seeing the curve adjustment applied everywhere. Uh, so that is just a nice quick way to see where a luminosity mask is working or what effect it's having. Uh, clip will create a clipping group. That just simply means that the effects of this layer are limited to wherever the layer below is transparent. So in this case, this is an entire image, but if it was um, something that was a just partial piece of the image, maybe I had a selection of just the building, then it would limit the changes just to that area. We can click clip again to ungroup it, so, or uh, unclip it. Uh, next up is the blend if. This will pull up all the blending options, most importantly the blend if sliders, which you can then drag to change the way that the layers blend together. Uh, as always, if you alt click, you can split the sliders to get kind of a feathered edge there. Uh, and I'm moving kind of quickly because I just want to show you what's in this panel. I'll, I'll give you more detail in the future about different ways you can use some of these features if you're not familiar with it. Uh, invert will invert a mask, or if you have an active selection, we'll let you invert that as well. And because I have both here, it's going to let me choose whether I want to invert the, uh, the layer mask, 
the selection or just the selected area of the mask. Uh, so I'll, um, I'll just invert the selection here. Now we can see the marching ants on the outside. So before we were selected here, now we're selected on the outside. Um, just gives you a lot of flexibility. We can of course uh, deselect this or clicking again, we can reselect it. So we can always pull up the last selection that was used by hitting deselect. Uh, if we have an active selection, clicking on ants will hide the marching ants. So I still have a selection that's active and we can see that if we create some sort of a new layer here, we'll see that that kind of came through. Um, but I had hidden marching ants. So if I hit ants again, it's gonna show the selection. Uh, this is the kind of thing where, let's go ahead and load up a selection from this mask here. You can see when you're using complex selections like this, uh, it can get a little bit distracting. So temporarily hiding the marching ants is a, a nice way to work with your selection, not obscuring your view of the image. Let me go ahead and get rid of that. And this last block here, these are all different blending modes. So we have the normal, we have multiply to darken, lighten and screen will lighten up whatever selected uh, overlay and soft light are gonna increase contrast. Uh, differ is difference. It's not going to be useful here. It's basically subtracting the layers. This is very helpful when you're trying to align an image. And then we can apply an image uh, just based on hue, saturation, color, or luminosity. And with all these, you'll see right now I'm in normal blend mode. If I click, say, multiply, if I click it again, it goes back to normal. So I can always, you know, quickly toggle one of these on and off by just double clicking it. So that's just a brief overview of basics. Like I said, I will continue to show more videos on how to use these if you're not familiar with these. Um, but I hope you find that it's a useful addition if you are new to luminosity masking or maybe don't know the shortcuts. I uh, hope that you find this to be a helpful addition. And as I said, it's included for free with uh, any purchase of Lumensia.